Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Ahsoka, Episode 6, Part 6, Far, Far Away. This one's directed by Jennifer Getzinger, written by Dave Filoni, stars Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano, Natasha Leo Bordiso as Sabine Wren, Diana Lee Inosanto as Lady Morgan Elspeth, Ivana Sacno as Shin Hati, Ray Stevenson as Balin Skull, David Tennant as Hu Young, and Mary Elizabeth Winston as Hera Syndulla. So, what, I mean, this episode had a lot to live up to after the hype from last episode. Now, I will say, last episode was a lot of uh, giving us fan service, maybe even closure. But it didn't really move the story forward a lot. I mean, very little, right? Um, so, this one definitely moves the story a lot further. Uh, it's paced a lot quicker. Uh, as you can see, Dave Filoni is not directing this one, so this one's definitely going to be about uh, probably a lot of other stuff that we are been waiting to see. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this episode as well. Uh, I think it had a lot of what makes Star Wars fun. Uh, we saw a little, we, you know, going into this new unexplored adventure, it's fun to see a different planet, a different setting. Uh, some of the mythology still coming back, being woven in through the story. Um, we also get to see like new creatures and new kind of like cultures and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's a fun time to go explore in this new place. Uh, so I really enjoyed the episode. Uh, it was about 42 minutes long of the episode itself. Uh, so by the time we get, you know, without the credits and all that stuff. So, yeah, this one uh, is pretty fun. I will say there's a few surprises on this one. Uh, I will get into spoilers in, two, in a second. But overall, I think this was a worthy follow-up. Probably not as fan-hyped as the previous episode. And I don't know that... I mean, maybe for a very specific type of fans, but... I don't know if we're ever going to top that as far as just like fan payoff. So uh, let's get into it. We're going into spoilers. So if you haven't watched the episode, make sure to go, you know, check it out and then come back, finish the rest. Let's get through it. So we open with uh, in hyperspace with the Purgles. And then Ahsoka is having a conversation with Huyang while they travel to this other world. Um, Ahsoka has uh, confesses to Huyang that. She didn't tell Hera that Sabine went willingly, right? Uh, Ahsoka was able to have a vision of what happened there. Um, and then I think Hu Yang, to me, like I said, I've mentioned this before, he really is like the anchoring character. He is the wise character, right? He's probably seen generations and generations of Jedi go and, and, and imparted his wisdom. And there's a quote that I really liked uh, uh, from, from this episode from Hu Yang. Uh, the force provides you with insight, but it does not give you all the answers. Obviously, that sounds a lot better when it's coming from David Tennant. So, yeah, very cool stuff. Uh, then we, you know, get into the episode. We get the reveal of the the name of the episode, Far, Far Away, which there was a really nice touch because Hu Yang was telling Ahsoka's story as we cut to the opening credits. Now, this is the last we'll see of both of them, at least for this episode. Everything else has to do with all the other people that we did not see last episode. So let's keep going here. Uh, we start off with Sabine being captive on the ship and, and Balin talking to her. I really, really appreciate and love Ray Stevenson's performance. Um, the way that his character, he, he fully developed a character that, although we know that it's, it is a character is an antagonist, it doesn't, it's not somebody that I'm, uh, openly rooting against, like constantly rooting against, which is interesting in Star Wars. Like in Star Wars, usually it's very well defined, at least in some of the first, you know, the older stuff. It's very well defined who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, what are their intentions. And this one is not. And that that lot to it has a lot to do with Ray Stevenson's, uh, you know, performance. But uh, yeah, after that, uh, they arrive on Perdidia. Peridia, the ancient home of the Datomiri, who are the ancient, like they are the ancestors of the witches of Dathomir and all that stuff. So there's a lot of lore and world building here. Uh, we also see that 
this is where the Purgal come to die. So it's, it's a graveyard of, of sorts. And we see this really cool shot of the ship arriving and then all these like whale bones, like, you know, very reminiscent of uh, the elephant graveyard in The Lion King, like a lot of that same imagery. Uh, Morgan Espel, Elspeth, also as they arrive, I, um, uh, Diana Lisa Inosanto, like, she has this look on her face like she's giddy, like very excited, which is very interesting to see like in that, like it almost feels like this is fulfilling her life's destiny, which is really well done. Like it, that, like the Innocence's performance in this really just sold that moment because even, even Balin kind of looked at her like, what's wrong with like, what's going on? Like what, what, what what's wrong with you? Uh, we get to see more night sisters, the, the mothers they, they're called. Uh, and then they, they make a comment of of saying that it reeks of Jedi, but it took me a second to figure out like, okay, how would they even know? Like, does does it is there some remnant of Ahsoka in, in Sabine? Because as far as we know, Sabine can't you know can't use the force, can't really channel it very well. Uh so like why why does Sabine kind of like um instill that in them? But Maybe it's just because of her training and, and the, the fact that she's been hanging out with Ahsoka. Uh, but I don't know. It it gives me... Like I said, there there's a lot more scenes with Balin where he has his own plan. And that's kind of what I'll go next in my in my notes. So keep that keep that in mind, I think. I think it's going to be important. I think it's going to come back. I don't think we know fully what Balin is looking for here. So Balin and Shin are talking about the fall of the Jedi Temple, which we haven't really heard much uh, as far as Balin talk about that, which is really good to explore, I think. Uh, and then also, this is where they have a conversation of like, okay, if <clears throat> if they're gonna, uh, if we're, if we're here, like how, why, what are we doing here? What is what is the end game, right? So uh, this is where I started just making notes of like, what is Balin's true plan is his allegiance? What is he looking for? Uh, so a destroyer, like a Star Destroyer shows up. Uh, it looks really cool because they lack the resources of like how to fix the ship. You can tell this is Thrawn's ship. Uh, I think because of the designs that it has in the bottom, right? It's the same ship that the Purgles took in a hyperspace. If you've seen Rebels, um, but it's fixed with all this, like, the gold metal that we've been seeing. It looks like that's probably the material that's available on this planet. Uh, so it's really cool. Too. There's a lot of details that really let us know. This is a way, this is a different galaxy. The resources are different. So very cool stuff. Um, uh, I really like the look of the ship as well. So we have a lot of night troopers still. They're led by uh, somebody named Enoch, who also, like, all the night troopers have um because they haven't like i said because they don't have access to their normal resources they've had to upkeep their armor with like the the threads that also like it almost looks like the same fabric that the night sister used for their their wares like that red fabric so it, it adds a really nice touch to them and then the moment that a lot of people including myself have been waiting for thrawn shows up played by lars mickelson uh, very cool stuff. Like, you know, Lars, uh, voiced Thrawn in, in the, uh, in the Rebels cartoon. So the fact that he himself is portraying him in live action is very cool. Uh, I think Lars also has that same presence. I think at first Thrawn looks a little bit goofy, but then once you remember his look in Rebels, it's all about how Mickelson carries his performance. That's what really makes you believe that this is Thrawn. Right, the voice, the performance, the way his body movements, like it's all the same Thrawn. It just, you know, it's live action. It looks a little bit different. Like I said, at first it looked a little goofy, but once you look past that and really see what the performance is doing, oh man, uh, he has a conversation with Sabine, and then per their promise, uh, Sabine is free to go look for Estra. They give her a mount, they give her some food and stuff, but obviously Thrawn has. Uh, an ulterior motive behind this. Uh, he sends out Balin and Shin to hunt Sabine and Estra if they find them. But like at this point, Thrawn just wants to get out of this galaxy. Like that's his main priority, right? Uh, I think right now they are 
moving all the resources from their destroyer to the the big ring ship that they have. Um, so this is going to take a while. They mentioned this is going to take three rotations, uh, which is a really in, just a fun, uh, you know, moving clock, like uh, adding a little bit of pressure to to all the action. So we have a winding clock as well. So uh, Sabine is ambushed by some nomads in her mount. Uh, there's a really fun fight scene, but you can just tell that if you're just like some random, you know, unnamed ambush guy, uh, or, or a group of people, like, you're going to get your ass kicked by Sabine. She is a Mandalorian-trained warrior, too. Like, she's not just, uh, you know, training for to be a Jedi. She's, she's a Mandalorian. So uh, she takes them all out. Uh, and then Sabine and, and the Mount, which are these really cool creatures that look like a mix of, like, a giant wolf and, and, you know, and a rat, kind of. Uh, they're called Howlers. At least that's what the, the caption calls them. Uh, yeah, they they find these little creatures called Nutti. Uh, then a lot of them show up, and uh, this is when you can tell, like, it, in Star Wars, when you have a really cute creature that is kind of afraid, but it's peaceful, um, they almost feel like, uh, they give me Hobbit vibes, but, like, because they live in, like, this little village, and they have to move around. Uh, so, yeah, they and they're, they're very small. They have, like, little shells that they hide in. Uh, and this is when I knew, okay, these are the guys that are going to be hanging out with Estra. Uh, so, you know, uh, we have a quick, one other conversation between Shin and Balin, where he mentions about the Vulcan Jedi, which means the Jedi that were trained in the wild after the fall of the temple, uh, when they're referring to Estra. And this is where he explains that there is something bigger. There's a bigger force in this planet, and that's kind of what he's going after. Uh, and Thrawn is aware of that, and that's why he wants to leave. So, yeah, I think this isn't Thrawn and, and gang versus, uh, you know, our rebels. This is more of a three-way fight, I think, at the moment. I don't know. I feel like Balin may turn, and turn out to be a good guy. Uh, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what his plans is. So, Sabine goes to the little village of the Noti. They find Esra. Oh man, that was such a such a great reunion. Uh, Imanis Fondi uh, is uh, playing Esra, as we can see here. We also have Wes Chatham as Captain Enoch, uh, who is this uh, night trooper that has like a golden face. Uh, pretty cool, like pretty cool design, just to make him make him stand out. Uh, but anyways, back to Ezra, Sabine, they have their a beautiful reunion that is almost ruined by Ezra asking if they can go home. Uh, but they, they won't really want to talk about that yet. So, yeah, the, all the pieces are in place in this in, in Peridia. Uh, the last thing we see is that the mothers advise uh, Thrawn that Ahsoka is coming. And this is the moment that really solidified and sold Thrawn to me uh, because... Thrawn is still as pragmatic as he's ever been. He's ready for any, like, he never just, he never just says, like, something is done, right? He's always thinking of all the possible outcomes. You know, Ahsoka isn't, even though Balin's told everyone that he killed Ahsoka, he knows that Ahsoka isn't dead until he knows that she's dead. He's not going to trust the mercenaries, even if they're supposed to be on his side. So Thrawn is really always looking out for his himself his best interest, and he's just as pragmatic as ever. He's just as, like, always, the gears are always turning in Thrawn's head, and that's what Lars, like, Mikkelsen just brings that to the performance. Uh, so it is great. I think they really recapture uh, the essence of what made Thrawn such a great threat. Uh, I hope to see that more in the future. As much as I want the Rebels gang to uh, to be okay, I, I you know, I, I think giving them a great adversary like Thrawn is going to be so much fun. So, yeah, quite enjoyed this episode. Great pacing, some cool action, and, of course, beautiful moment of a reunion of two characters that I love to see. Uh, and then, of course, uh, all this surrounded by the peril that is incoming, uh, but as well as, as the hope that is coming as the Ahsoka and the Purgles uh, kind of get close. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff happening in this episode. Uh, so... If you watched this episode and you enjoyed it, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. 
we have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>